Welcome, my name is Jacob Tifo. I'm founder and head engineer at Alpha Omega Rocketry. Uh, as you saw in our last video, we've been uh, going through our gimbal test campaign and we've completed three so far. Well, in this video, I'm about to share with you our last four tests, so gimbal test four through seven. Also three parachute tests. But uh, get the chase. here's our Xerxes rocket. Uh, we have been uh, working quite, free, uh, quite hardcore the last three weeks on simulation, a lot of uh, basically making sure our code's more robust and just uh, learning about our system as a whole. Uh, I did want to go over a brief overview of all the tests uh, with you and uh, hope you enjoy. Okay, gimbal test four. Uh, this was probably our most successful test. We had near perpendicular uh, rocket the entire length of the attempt and it was overall a very uh, visibly good test. But there were a few flaws in our code base. One was that the SD write cycles were way too fast, which was causing some of uh, some of the other systems on the flight computer to be a little jittery. Another one was that the SD card, uh, all the data from the IMU, from the B, uh, BME 280, all systems on the flight computer were actually writing to a single data file. This is my bad and a rookie mistake uh, because I've been learning to code through this project. So after fixing those uh, little mishaps, we were able to uh, proceed with Gimbal Test 5. Gimbal Test 5 was an utter failure, and there, were, there was one key cause to this. Uh, when we initialized PAV, we fired the rocket nearly instantaneously after that, and that did not give the gyroscope enough time to calibrate, and therefore we, the TVC mount gimbal to its lock position, and, well, bopped your uncle. Gimbal Test 6 came shortly after this, and in fact, a few minutes. And we want, still wanted to test our PAD variables, which we had uh, found after uh, a week of simulation. And we were, it was kind of a letdown. Uh, they, there was quite a bit of uh, varying to the flight and wasn't ideal. Uh, so we thought we had to quit here. We actually, uh, Alex, my buddy, had to leave. But I went back to the computer, did a little bit more simulation, hardcore intuition on the system of the rocket, and came up with some new PID variables. That led us to gimbal test seven. As you saw there, uh, that was probably, uh, that was one of our most successful tests. Not a stateless flight four, or test four, but uh, nevertheless was pretty stable. Uh, what actually happened was, when you saw the rocket kick like this, it kind of threw it off, and that's because the external gimbal almost broke. It still gave the full range of freedom, but uh, it added an anomaly, which the rocket then corrected for itself, and we were quite pleased with that. Uh, another thing about the gimbal test uh, campaign was, test day, we had many different mishaps, from the misfire in test five, to frying a teensy coal, you know what I mean. 
uh, accidentally plugged the servo in uh, miscorrectly, and that good thing I had another TNC on hand. Okay, parachute test. There were, uh, as you saw earlier, there were three of them, and each one of them had uh, their pros and cons. Uh, we learned something about our system each time, and we're able to improve upon it. Uh, the first test, which seemed successful, actually was quite a failure because our little shock absorber system for the electronic bay was actually uh, ripped out of the rocket. The parachute and the nose cone would have separated, and the booster would have fallen with no means of recovery. This would have been really bad, but uh, thankfully, that's why we test, and we were able to uh, come up with a remedy. Parachute test two was actually just removing that and putting in another ejection charge and trying it again. This, though, took away the seal in the ejection chamber, which uh, led to more of a bang instead of a whoosh. Because, like, let's picture um, some type of air gun, like a BB gun. What you're doing is you have pressure behind and you're pushing the projectile forward. In this case, the projectile is the parachute, which is pushing it up and out of the rocket, deploying and uh, bringing the rocket down, hopefully gracefully. But in this case, we didn't, ha we didn't have the seal, and what happened was we had uh, more of a bang down here, which uh, released the pressure out through the electronics bay. Uh, nothing was damaged, but we do not want that in a flight. And as you saw, only the nose cone came out. The parachute did not deploy. Parachute attempt three was um, all systems were uh, working completely. Uh, what we did was we did some quick CAD, uh, redesigned the uh, upper portion of the electronic bay, and that created the seal in the ejection chamber that we wanted. Uh, that then led to we having our bang up here instead of the bang down here, and we had full deployment. Uh, this verified our systems, and we were quite pleased and moved on. All in all, progress over the last few weeks, I feel, has been uh, pretty incredible here at AOR. Uh, we've been able to get a lot of help uh, from the rocket communities. Uh, I want to thank Chaos for his help with some CFD simulation, and uh, that as a whole uh, that really came in handy when it came to uh, the PID simulations as we were trying to incorporate some different aerodynamic forces in our flight simulation. Uh, also want to thank the entire uh, BPS Discord and the Advanced Rocketry community. They've been really, really helpful when it, came, when it, when it comes to just learning about different systems. As I've taken this uh, rocket and this project as an opportunity to uh, learn uh, Kind of a learn while doing approach and i've been really thankful for that uh also want to thank and particularly uh cole at delta connor at pay space and charles roger at ccs technology uh, rocket technologies for their help uh they've all been extremely uh instrumental in the project the last few weeks um also wanted to say, if you want to learn more about AOR, if you want to keep up to date uh, more than just these YouTube videos, you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Uh, all three if you want, but there I post quite frequently, and you can see uh, clips of the test footage before they come out, and uh, just as a whole, uh, uh, be up to date. Uh, let's see, anything else? There is something. I don't like asking for money, uh, but you can support us on Patreon. Uh, uh, an investment in AOR is an investment in my future and in the future of anyone else working with the project. Because as we're working on this, working on code, we're developing skills that we can use in college and in future careers uh, for the rest of our lives. And an investment here is an investment in us. Uh, right now, if for a limited time, any amount of uh, donations or support via Patreon will get you a free uh, AOR t-shirt. These are nothing special. They're not professional merch. There's some stuff I'm whipping up custom made, but nevertheless, I hope to deliver them to you uh, in best quality possible. But I want to thank you all for tuning in. I uh, hope you all have a nice day. May we explore the universe from beginning to end, or from Alpha to Omega. Have a nice day.